I'm not certain what we're looking at at the Fazila Mali cases. It's been coming on for a long time. People across the country are saying that more than five million rand is missing. I believe that something is clearly going on. The fact that an agent or an operator known for good repute in the past has taken so much money and none of her passengers have traveled. Now, the problem with all of this is that people are now becoming at their wit's end saying that enough is enough, as Aziza Breyer just mentioned on the show. Uh, today I'm joined by Rafik Sovel. I've got Aziza Breyer, our resident attorney from Fazlidin Abrams and Associates. Fazlidin Abrams will walk us through some of the issues as we start talking about what had transpired, if we can work that out. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Rafik, I'm going to start with you. You've been in touch with us for a while already. You seem to have gone from a very a uh, moderate temperament when I started talking to you and I see that blood pressure rising. What happened? Okay, so so in short, Faisal, we as as you know we had we had planned to go on Umrah in September last year and as people normally do we, we made the necessary bookings and so on and and all seemed to be in order up until a few days before our departure date when we received notification from the officers of New Heights Travel that a unilateral decision had been taken to cancel all Umrahs for September. Um, that obviously left us on, on the back foot because, was, as I said, it was a few days before our, our scheduled departure. And you engineer your life around that? Absolutely. Like taking leave and doing all kinds of things? Correct. Mm. So, so now we had established that these Umrah um, journeys have been cancelled and uh, we made the necessary inquiries to establish why and we were told that the reason for it was because of a change in the the visa system. Now we were subsequently um, led to believe that the visa system sometimes changes usually around the first of Muharram so this was just after the first of Muharram and, and there were apparently some major changes in the visa system and that was the reason that Fazila used for, um, for being unsuccessful in, in arranging these Umrahs and then eventually having to cancel them. Uh, to date we have not um, had an opportunity to, to go on Umrah dis despite requests um, from Fazila to to be able to do our umrahs at a later date. Um, we had also indicated to her initially that we would prefer cancellation and a refund of the monies which was part of the offer that she had extended and nothing in that regard has been forthcoming either. So so we remain aggrieved. W were, you, were you kind of hopeful that that will materialize? No, obviously, you know, um, we, we received a fairly formal notification of the cancellation in which there were two options. Option one, apply for a complete and full refund. Alternatively, postpone the Umrah to a later date. Now, in my case, I was not able to travel at a later date. So initially, I requested um, a cancellation and a refund of the monies. When that was not forthcoming, I then indicated to Fazila that I would like to take up the option of, of an Umrah um, and nothing was forthcoming there either. So, so yes, that, that's the problem we find ourselves with. You know, in, in the interim, um, what has happened is that many other victims have come to the fore with similar stories, some of them far more horrific than my own. Of course, yes. your, your amount is just over 50,000 Rand. That's right. Are we talking about you plugging into an amount 10 times that uh, or, or, or 50 times that or whatever it might be? That's yeah. much bigger. So I'm going to come back to you on, on that particular matter of the broader cases. Because sure. I know that you're in touch with some of the victims around the country. Aziza, when did it all start for you? Um, well, the devastation started when she sent us the letter. Um, we, we obviously opted to uh, postpone with her 
she said like early October and um, we were all for it because we were not working except for my daughter who had to postpone her leave, uh, which she did. Uh, but then Fazila kept on changing the date. First she gave us one date, then she changed it again. And when she changed it a third time and then we cancelled, then we said no. Because then my daughter started complaining. She said, Mommy, I can't change my date every time. I work in the hospital. Um, I need to cancel. Uh, when did you realize that something untoward was going on, that something is just giving you this feeling inside to say something's not right here? Well, I didn't realize that at all. We were still hoping because there was always good, good reviews about Fazila. In fact, we spoke to some ulama and they said like, Fazila said, postpone, postpone, because she's a very trustworthy person. But um, then I met Rafik and the two of us opened a can of worms and then it all came, Joba people came in and contact. And you realize there's many worms in that and can. Yes, and so then we realized that this Umrah or it's not going to happen. W was there time in your communications with her that you felt uh, that just the, the mere value of the communication that something wasn't right in the way she addressed you or she tried hiding something or something that's sitting in the background that you couldn't put your finger on? Um, well, she, uh, she kept on um, delaying and then she said she had problems with the hotels. Um, she couldn't get the hotel that she initially booked for because it was five star hotels. Um, but we weren't bothered by that. We wanted to go. We told the Fazila it doesn't matter. The hotels don't matter anymore as long as you get to the kingdom. Our Umrah is important to us. And um, she didn't want to budge for that. She didn't want to pay the extra money that they said the visas were going to cost. She, didn't wanna, she did not offer us that at all. But yet, you go to an agent and you give them an X amount of money expecting it all to be done. And then when anything goes wrong in the background, you expect them to rectify that exactly. instead of exactly. you sitting yeah. with that. Uh, Aziza, Rafik, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, firstly, then you've been going through a lot of the documents that were sent to you before the show. Uh, you uh, have some opinions of what you're looking at. Um, what are those opinions? Thank you, Faisal, for having, having me again on the show. And I can, with a clear conscience, say that what's happening to these individuals, the poor individuals, Mutamirins, who has now uh, committed themselves on performing a holy obligation, is nothing but criminal. Certainly, well, well, there's what, a What leads you to make such a, such a strong assertion? I've looked through the, the, the methods that was used, and, and it's similar to the other uh, perpetrators out there. Uh, what you find is misrepresentation, um, it's it's, it's a, a, a statement of a particular fact which leads to be or, or uh, appears to be plausible. However, it ends up being untrue. So these Mutamiris, you must understand that they've paid a certain amount of money over to uh, Fazila Malik and the, the company with the intention of entrusting that money to them, for them to utilize the money in order to pay for the tickets, the accommodation, and apply for the visas and successfully obtain these visas. Now, I believe that the cancellation was at late, as late as 13th of S September, as, and you were supposed to depart on the, 20th, 18th, the 18th. 18th of September. <coughs> so, if you have made a decision to stop uh, or, or to cancel the trip five days before it's supposed to go, then you should have at least confirmed that you've booked the tickets, you should have confirmed that you've paid for the accommodation and you must be able to confirm that you've applied for visas at least no or at least two out of the three but as far as i'm concerned i have received no proof whatsoever from the mutamarins where fazila and her company and her members of staff or family has provided s solid evidence to the effect that there was in fact a, co a confirmation and a a, a, a proof of the accommodation being paid for or booked, the tickets being paid for and issued. We need, we need None to that. And, so, and sometimes we need to understand that uh, confirmation is one thing and reservation is something else. Correct. Uh, many people can make a reservation, right. but can such a reservation be proven, confirmed, Indeed. Uh, is another matter. Right. Uh, Fazin, I would just want to get your idea around, uh, so we have a business, uh, a client pays 
money into that for a particular service that's defined either contractually or verbally whatever it may be um, and that money then doesn't go towards the service that they booked but the money goes in other areas of the business Correct. through the eyes of the law what would you see I would definitely see investment mm. because the money was firstly entrusted to them to perform certain functions as what we call specific performance and failure of that specific performance would usually say that oh the money's still there but I never performed and therefore it's a civil action but in this case there is no money why why did these people why did the mutuality not receive any uh, a cent back from from them yet if they have the money then pay back the money but it seems like it's more political than anything else if one has to 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 to, to compare to to what's happening in the political sphere uh, but uh, I must confirm that the, the, the methods used is, is nothing but um, tactics of, of similar to a mafia nature. You know, it's intimidation, it's, it's, it's a uh, confirmation or some sort of uh, statement that we, you get back your money, but you don't do this. If not, what, there's always that, don't do this, or if you do, this might happen. But there's no concrete statement of what might happen. So the poor Mutamiri in a sit sitting back thinking what should I now go forward? Should I lodge a criminal complaint? Should I start civil action? But now these the, 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 the Fazila Malik and, and a company has now I believe according to the evidence or the information provided to me is that these these statements being made that don't go forward. If you don't go if you do go forward, uh, you, these you fears of they may not getting the money and, and whatever the case may be. So so that in itself leads to intimidation. Um, so Correct. we have what we call fraud, possible fraud, uh, where the the misrepresentation was made to the Mutamirin and as a result they suffered prejudice or potential prejudice. And then you have the second left leg of, of a crime which is in the form of theft, uh, more specifically embezzlement, where money was entrusted to a person. And this is where we, we're calling on the the authorities to reform the law of course they have as attorneys in if a client pays me an amount of money <coughs> that goes into my trust account it stays there i cannot touch that money until i provide the service and upon invoicing the client i am then only allowed to utilize and if i have to pay any disbursements on behalf of my client i need to pay that money from trust and i need to have proof of payment i cannot just take money out of trust and that is what the reform is that we're calling for into in, in the tourism industry, more specifically for these religious obligations. Of course. Uh, Fazin, thank you for that. I'm going to come back to you on a number of other issues uh, around that because I've got some questions around that. Rafik, uh, we know that you, when you opened up this can of worms that Aziza said, you plugged into something bigger. There's something bigger going on. You're talking to people in Johannesburg. You're talking about millions of rands, uh, money for all kinds of things related to this. Give me some context to that. Okay, so, so when it emerged that there were more people involved than just Aziza and myself. Uh, give me a number for starters. I think we, we, <laughs> the last time I checked, there were about 45 people that had, that had come forward. And uh, 45 and people that represent more people, like for example a family or so, or 45 passengers? No, no, 45 people that represent families. With, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so obviously there's, there's a lot more than just the 45. In terms of numbers, um, up until last week I was under the impression that it was somewhere just over 5 million. Um, on Friday evening at a meeting that we had with the Cape Town victims it emerged from one of the victims that the figure was closer to six million and we were also led to believe that there are possibly some additional victims that may come on board and by estimation we we assuming that that's probably going to add about another three or four hundred thousand to the the already high number well, so when you chat to all these people what's the sentiment uh, how are people feeling? Do they feel that something had gone wrong here, noting that Fazila was a reputable agent? Or do you feel the way Aziza had asserted earlier on, on a video we just did before this, that she believes that she had been taken for a ride? I think initial, initially, Faisal, 
we, we all thought that it was something that went wrong. I must tell you that Fazila has a very rich history in the, the Hajj and Umrah industry. Um, there have been many, many people that have only had good to say about Fazila. But subsequently, we've come to learn that in between those good experiences were the bad experiences as well. And to answer your question, initially we thought, with someone that has such a rich history, it must have been a problem that occurred. What we subsequently learned is, is that it wasn't a technical problem or an operational problem. The problem runs far deeper than that. And now it appears that the, prob the problem is leaning more to, to something of a criminal nature. And that's, that's been the sad thing that, that we've had to deal with. Um, if we look at the people around the country that have come forward, there, there are essentially four types of, of issues that we're dealing with. It's the failed Umrahs of September. We also learned that there were failed um, episodes of, of Hajj just prior to that in 2019. We've got some of those reports. We heard that there's many, many cases of loans that Fazila had made from Hujaj and Mutamirin, many of, of whom had been approached <coughs> on the Holy Lands to extend money. And, and that was a hard one for me to understand because I, I saw that as completely exploitative. You know, when, you, when you're performing Hajj or Umrah, I think you get to a point where you at the peak of spirituality. At that particular point in time, you have so much faith in your fellow Muslim that if they were to ask you to, to pledge your home as security, you'd be happy to do that on the belief that you're doing it for a fellow Muslim and they would not fail you. And I think that, you know, Fazila's tactic of approaching people on Hajj and Umrah to borrow monies from them was just purely exploitative. Of course. Um, so we have that, and then of course there, there are a few other cases where people had provided services to, to Fazila and where she had failed to pay them as well. So, so that's four key uh, issues going around the first and we'll comment about that after the break with you. But Aziza, I want to ask you a question, and I know that sometimes these things are, are not the easiest things to communicate, but Umrah is something for any person that sits high on the list, list in terms of spirituality and with spirituality comes emotions and, and this plan, you see yourself fulfilling that and although people will come to you and tell you utter rubbish like don't worry why are you stressing and going on about this your umrah is accepted hopefully it is even without going but don't put people off by saying don't pursue the money because it was accepted because uh, that's not justice and justice should prevail in any situation but be that as it may if i was to ask you how do you feel do you how, do you sleep at night peacefully knowing that somebody had done this to you and your family also like you said it's it's not about the money it's about the umrah that didn't happen uh, we don't mind the money it's just like we uh, that spiritual I don't know how to put it, but um, we were going to go as siblings. We were going to go as siblings, and we were. It, this was the first time that we, as brothers and sisters, were going to travel together. And I was so much looking forward to it. Medina was calling me. But you say you fell ill after me. that, which is concerning to me. She? You fell ill after that. Uh, I was very depressed because mm. I did all the bookings. I did the bookings on behalf of everybody. I took the money to Vazila, I dealt with him. So uh, it, it just hit me hard because. Um, you feel responsible. I felt responsible because I chose the agent. I, I, I have uh, two messages that I would like to hear from you. If Vazila was sitting here right now, what would your message to her be? I'm not here to slander Vazila. I just want to know what happened to our money, that's all. She promised so many things to us and. She, she promised us the Umrah. That is what we want. I just want to know what happened to the Umrah. I'm not worried what happened to the money. What happened to the Umrah? That's all. 
She didn't give us a straightforward answer. That is all that we wanted, a straightforward answer. You, you sounded like the fact that you had taken your brother's money and you were convening all of this. There's obviously a sense of responsibility which one can perceive from you. What's your message to them, knowing that it's not your fault, but they, they entrusted this to you? You know, my sister, she sponsored the two brothers on this and she's the one that actually lost the most. And everybody kept on saying, don't worry, something better is coming. And I'm just making dua, inshallah, that something better and that something better will happen and that she will get double her reward for what she did for brothers, inshallah. So we're going to go to a break. When I come back, we've got two more guests that join us and tell us about their stories. Uh, so do stay tuned. I'll continue chatting to Fazluddin about some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, I have a lot of questions, Fazluddin, legally that's going on there. We'll address that now. But the important thing here is to note that how long is this going to continue until we see reform in the industry and also do note that if you don't catch the second half of the show that in the next couple of weeks I'm going to be dealing with this story again from various other perspectives. Welcome back from the break. New Heights Travel, Fazila Malik, 5.3 million approximately plus according to a previous guest is being sought. Where did it all go to? That's the big question. Now, I've invited Fazila Malik onto the show. The fact that you didn't arrive uh, is a problem. We've got a chair on that side of the studio that's open for you on the next episode if you wish to join us and tell us your side of the story. Because I believe that everyone has an opportunity, should be given an opportunity to tell their side of the story. But if you don't arrive, that's telling another story, Fazila. So uh, we've got two more guests uh, that talks about what they've been experiencing. How much money? 37,900. That was the uh, amount I paid money over. Money that you saved for, that you worked for. Yes. Mm. Um, you know, um, like the previous guest mentioned, it's not about the money. It was very much emotional roller coaster. And, and you know, for me, um, I'm not going to mention, you know, all the emails that came and all the letters afterwards and the money promise with the dates of 21 days. It's first. totally relevant. It's part of it's, the it's, game. It's, 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 it's part yeah. of the game. Yeah. But for, for me, as, as, as you know, if it should happen again, it's where can they go? Where can people go? Because I didn't know where to go. I contacted people I knew. And I'm talking about organizations. SAU. South African Hajj and Umrah Council. They told my wife at Lesidia we only deal with Hajj. So the name puzzled me. Um, MJC, uh, they were prepared to, 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 to help until today. They haven't came forth to, uh, um, yeah, about the assistance that they can deliver. Now for me, it's like, you know, people can tell us that our money is lying in hotels in Saudi Arabia. How do we contact them? Who but can but, con but con I have a question for you around that. Yes. Wouldn't you draw the line by saying it's not my problem? I've paid you for the service and I need the service. Yes. Because yes. the story seems to migrate from one excuse to another. To another. And after a while you're going to be like, right, can I just get my money or my trip? Yeah. And, 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 and you know, also something I, I need to focus on is, is, is visa. I mean, fortunately, my wife and I went on this journey. Uh, remember that email came the 13th of September. Very emotional day because um, we buried my wife's uncle on that mm. day. Mm. So the message came, the janazah was 3 o'clock. I told my wife, listen here, yeah, I'm just going to do Salatul Janazah and we're going to. And I promise you, we, after that, we went to all the different that we know of agencies that can assist us because you know you, you're in that state emotional state that you need to you want to go you still feel that you can you can you know go on this journey and 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 yeah the tears shed and all those you know it's, it's just as it's, it's, it's something i suppose there's nothing that can replace uh, things like that and, and that is for all the people that you know never win that for, cry and and, uh, and you so know. you actually went on your own accord out of this yes but so but Yes, I went. Of course, I had to get more money to go. 
but that was the 13th we were supposed to leave on the 21st right we left the 23rd so in that week you know our visas were organized and, and and so so you know the possibility of of, of going what happened and and so that visa story and that I, I can't oh, seem to the visa story. Yeah, I can't seem to understand and, why that and, 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 and we and got South Africans there in, in, in Medina and, and Mecca and, and I don't know what, what problems there. They okay no, no problems. And, and, and I'm not buying the story of the system change. Uh, I know that the former guest Rafika told us about the about uh, the system change in Saudi Arabia. I get that the system changes. Yes. But how is it that every other travel agent in the world continue carrying their passengers through the system change, but Fazila didn't? Yeah. Is there a vortex where money is falling into? On your side, if that day came that you were supposed to go, that you didn't go, how did that make you feel? We uh, actually was very sad because... Um, what do you tell family, I mean? I mean, like, like people come to visit you, you know, it's Cape Town, and mm. people visit you, and it's a traditional yeah. experience to go, and people give these greeting cards. It's very traditional, and there you sit there, doing what? I actually, we did the greeting cards. Mm. Uh, we sent it on WhatsApp mm. for all the family members. And um, then afterwards, we I just had to put on uh, the WhatsApp again, our... Uh, Umrah trip is cancelled due to unforeseen terms, circumstances and um, but I would have loved to go with my brothers and sisters and this was a real opportunity for us to go together. If Azila Malik was sitting here right now, what would be your message to her? I would ask her, Fazila, I've been sending you so much messages, you made so many promises, you, you said uh, you made an amana, you're going to pay back the money. Um, I sent her a message last week, I, I, I told her she's, she's just lying, I'm not sick and tired of her lies, and she said, well, lie, she sent me a message back, she told me, well, lie, I'm not lying, I took an amana, you are going to get your money. I've heard those two words many times in these cases before, many times, well, lie and amana, I, I tried to sometimes work out who this lady Amana actually is, because uh, I heard this term so many times before. I'm sorry to say it, but of all the cases that I've been dealing with over the last four years around this issue, I can only recount a small amount of people, and that number went up recently with the Fasik Adams cases, and he clearly paid because he was shown the jail card, in my view. So I think at times you need to show the jail card, because I, I'm sure that's not the hotel that they want to be staying in for a while, and that's when we see action happening. But, I, but your, your case and, and your case and the case before this really talks about an innate problem, Fazluddin. Right. Is there a vortex here that money has been falling in? What do you see? From the information that was provided to me, and I don't have access to a bank account, obviously, um, and I'm hoping that the authorities will do that so that they could see exactly when the money was paid by the Mutamirings and then they need to track and see where the money went from there. Was it sent to another company? Was it spent? And I mean, really, Faisal, I think from September last year, we are now in February, or in December, at least three months. I'd like to find out what can I do with five million rand within three months? It's, it's mind boggling for me. I'm certain there's many people who can spend that money uh, by, one, by, by simply buying one vehicle or a house. But how do you not purchase any assets like that and spend the money or the money disappears? I find it very strange to believe. So I'm hoping that the authorities would certainly look into the financial trail and do a full forensic uh, investigations on uh, where the money went to. If there's any other companies involved where the money went to and benefited from this, whether it be a, a private individual or another company, that needs to surface because these people want answers. Yes, they may say they don't want to know where the money went to and they want the Umrah, but certainly inside of them, how do they go on that Umrah? They need to pay for it again. So how do we find out where the money is? Someone needs to pay. If she never spent it, then someone needs to pay for the money. So the underlying crux is, do we need a reform in the law? Because at the law, at the, as, it, as it stands right now, we have the two aspects of embezzlement and fraud. Then we also have the civil aspect. So we would look at and call for the authorities if 
these methods that has been used by these individuals, be it uh, Fazila and a company or Fazila Adams or anyone else who is guilty of or has allegedly uh, uh, conducted themselves in a way like this, then I want to call upon them and say, if you speak about an amana, then I have given or taken an amana to assess the people. I'm sitting here, I've taken down statements. Um, I'm assisting and, and, and guiding these people in going forward with whatever they instruct me to do. That is me performing an amana. So if you, Fazila, if you've taken an amana to pay back these people, please give me solid proof and I can negotiate or assist these victims and ask them, let us do something, get it on paper and get a timeline to it, get an amount to it, but don't give these people false hope because they are planning still on going on the Umrah. And how do they plan on, on something that is simply just dangled in front of them, which may or may not materialize? We need, we, need, we need the authorities, we need the reform in the law. And if, for example, any of these actions by these perpetrators are seen in the eyes of the law to be purely civil in nature, then we need immediate reform in the law. Of course. Do you believe you were robbed? Yes. Do you, you firmly believe you were robbed? Yes. Do you, do you feel the same? Yes. Because you've walked the timeline of what's been going on all no. the time. And you see all of that happening. Yes. What's and your message to Vazila? Um, my message to her, I, 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 I hope Almighty Allah will forgive her for all the tears. That, um, she was the cause of all the tears that were shed and all the three broken dreams, shattered dreams, I would say. I said that on previous shows. I always said that it's not people's money that was stolen, but their dreams, because Hajj and Umrah is a dream. It's a dream of every Muslim. Of and even if you've been there before, it's a dream to return again. Of course. So it's a dream. It's a dream. At your least wife, how did your wife handle oh, all of that? She was devastated. Mm. I mean, I, 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 I felt that morning I just needed to do this. Not only for, for, for my sake and for my wife. That just you to failed uh, yes. in some and, way. And, 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 and you know, we coughed up, I think, like 20,000 more than the original price, they say. But we just had to go. And, and, and I think the sympathy, that is what agents are doing o over these years. They're playing on the sympathy of the uh, Hujaj, Tamirin, all those, because, I mean, like, we was from the first group, we were placed on the second group, and I mean a group, like, we're looking at 60 members in a group, we are all those, they're not coming forth, why, because, you know, emotions, sympathy, all those, it, it's so, it's so, it's other way, it's other way. Do, do you have any hope that you might retrieve some money or do you have any hope that if you don't retrieve money would you be okay with Fazila being pushed through the legal system to get the appropriate outcome in terms of the law that should be meted out on it? Do you think that's where we should be going here? Yes, I think she should be punished for what she did to the older Mutamirin because that was something that each and everybody that uh, really wanted to go and uh, it's from as people speak it's from their heart you know hard earned money that some people that uh, struggle to to get that money and um, so she should really be punished for what she did first thing well, what's the way forward uh, we we find that a lot of people have sent you in particular lots of information and lots of documents proofs of purchase or uh, receipts and transfers and promises of visas that and all of that going on what is the way forward now uh, because in our previous cases we dealt with we had gone to a police station and laid some charges wow. and through those charges we saw a jump around to make sure that we don't get shown the jail card and things get done there uh, what's what do you suggest or what what are you working on right now to help these people we, I can confirm that the instructions to me is compile evidence, information, documents, proof of payments, emails confirming the cancellation and the reasons behind the cancellations, as well as uh, any particular uh, contractual uh, nature or document, 
in the form of a brochure where they elected to choose a particular product. So that particular information will be the supporting documents to the statement which has been drafted. Some of it is still in the process of being drafted. Those particular statements will be presented to the authorities. I have instructions to present the statements to SAPS where they will then further investigate the matter. And if there's any charges to be brought by the authorities, then we will most probably hear about it soon in, in, in the media or wherever. Uh, did you believe that uh, from a regulatory framework perspective uh, that the industry, uh, the gentleman said so, South African Hajj and Umrah Council, uh, we've been in discussion uh, with him many times regarding um, these issues and uh, they clearly don't deal with Umrah, so you're, you're right with that's concerned. Uh, the MJC, hopefully, uh, we are setting up some time with them to talk through these issues in the next hours, I think. Uh, so we're planning to do that. Uh, but do you believe that there's an issue in the, in the framework itself that allows the perpetuation of crimes within this particular area of fraternity? Certainly, Faisal. Mm. Uh, we will find that in society, uh, perpetrators or cr criminals or even just individuals who find a loophole and a gap in the law and then take advantage of that gap by causing prejudice or potential prejudice to society members, productive members of society. That is where we need, or the, the people who are responsible, who have been entrusted with a duty and an obligation to protect society, they need to step up. And as you've heard, it's not only Umrah, has been people who have planned their Hajj who have lost money as well. So what is Saog saying about that? If they're saying that we're not responsible, we don't regulate the Umrah field, what about those particular incidences where it was Hajj money that was taken? What, did they step in and did they then hold the person accountable? I'm not sure. I don't even think so. Uh, so I, I do know that Fazila was taken off from, from being an operator. But, but, but is but that enough? But the, is that enough? That's the question. You're right. Certainly is that enough? Not. Hmm. There's more to be done. There, there's, there's accountability. There's firstly, a person needs to be assessed. Uh, the, the, the particular incident needs to be evaluated and see whether there was any wrongdoing. Was there any malicious intent? Was there any uh, neglect? Was there any conduct that is, 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 is something that one could say is of a dishonoring nature? And then certainly the, the, the punishment needs to be uh, handed down. Um, the, there should be some repercussion. And at the moment you see that the only reason why these people are thriving, why the values are increasing, why the number is just going on and on and on, is it seems like there's just no stop, no end to this, is because nothing has been done. And that is why I, I want to take my hat off and commend the victims and the family for stepping forward and saying enough is enough. Thank you, Vasudin. Well, I, I suppose it is about that. I think around the country people are saying, uh, wherever I'm going, people are saying enough is enough. But with that comes a component of activism. My call to the public is to say that it is okay to sit and watch the program. It's okay to listen to the stories. And it's okay to sometimes be a victim or not a victim, whatever it might be. The, the question really here is, how much are you as a community prepared to stand up against an injustice? And my concern is around the elderly, poor and sick, and those that have saved for a long, long time to go there. Remember one of my previous cases that said this lady that had saved cash in a pillowcase for 14 years and her money was stolen. That lady is the responsibility of all of us as a community not only one or two or three people in, in society and some of the people standing up now, we all have to say no to an injustice. We're going to continue following up with the story in the next couple of months as we unpack exactly what happened. We wish to apply pressure on Fazila Malik and very direct pressure from this show and many other media houses who I call on to expose this matter further until we have answers from Fazila Malik.